Hey, my name is Zach, that's me right there. In this episode, I'm gonna cut grass with power tools, fail at putting it in bags, hit the ground repeatedly, lose my mind once or twice, and in the end, make this incredible hot tub enclosure. Stay tuned, here's what happens. Welcome to the construction site. This is my parents' backyard. They said they wanted a hot tub. Well, they've wanted one for many years, and this year I just said I would put it in the ground if they bought it. So, they bought it, and then I was on the hook to put it in the ground. And clearly that was a brazen statement because I don't even know how to dig a hole. I learned that grass has really deep roots and turf is really hard to remove. Um, not really hard, but you know, just takes some effort. And in this case, the drain spade right here, this guy was an MVP. Figured out how to dig a hole. Honestly, this was huge. Then I did it at light speed. And just kidding, this took a very long time, but was well worth it in the end because, you know, a hot tub goes here, and who doesn't want that? Also had to take out some of these plants that were here. This little garden bed had to go. Basically everything here had to go. And I made it go. Look at that face. Absolutely no idea how much work I'm about to do. Honestly, it's hilarious looking back on it. Let's carry on. So, did a lot of digging. Did digging at different angles. I had used a sawzall twice, maybe before, to cut stair stringers. And so this was, uh, this was a unique experience. But I figured it would make the most sense to make turf rolls. Like those huge machines that roll turf, but do it by myself with a sawzall and a shovel. So, cut it up. Kind of pulled it out with that shovel and then did my best to roll it up and stacked them all down at the bottom there. <laughs> it worked pretty well, I, personally, having never done this before. So I thought it was, you know, maybe one of the more clever things that I figured out. So I had to roll up all the turf. And one of the biggest things that we found out is that you shouldn't put turf in those lawn bags, like you can see off to the right there. And that's my brother helping me do it there as well. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're not technically lawn trimmings or they're not something that you should be asking the people to pick up. And I think that's because it's so heavy and so much of it is dirt. So if you're gonna do this, think of where you're gonna put all the dirt and all this turf. Last piece. Looking like a hole. One thing I realized during this project was that I have great friends. One day, they all came over and just helped me dig a hole. That was uh, pretty sweet. Shout out to all them. This project was also my first time ever ordering Home Depot drop-off, ordering all these materials for a project. Never done that before. Uh, it was pretty fun. Lucked out in some areas. Not in others, but good practice for uh, next time I order materials, I guess. Luckily, instead of starting a band, I just decided to dig more holes. I got pretty good at digging holes. This part was pretty fun. It was actually surprisingly loud with that cold chisel to knock those little lips off the bottom of those retaining stones, but I felt like a proper sculptor. This part, the leveling and the digging and the moving and the stomping was, was pretty not fun, <laughs> honestly. Um, you can see how much of it you have to do just for a three foot wall, but had to do it. Well, I did it, I guess. I honestly don't know if I had to do this. Um, I, you know, it's like a foot. No, it's, I guess it's like 18 inches at the highest where that dirt is. So I don't really know if a retaining wall is necessary, but it felt like it would be a good barrier. Uh, we have some big trees some big roots. Just wanted to make sure that Everything was enclosed well and would stay that way for ever, or a very long time at least. So this is the rest of that process. Had to wet down the stones, get it all level, nice. And then this is the tip of all the retaining wall videos I watched. 
they just said get that first row perfect and I completely agree. If the first row isn't level or a stone is crooked or something like that, you will eventually find that error magnified over however many more rows you create in this retaining wall. So spend extra time on this first row. You won't regret it if you're gonna do this. I also found the best strategy for me at least was to lay them all out and kind of look at the bigger picture of all the stones together instead of one by one and then come back one by one and look at them all. Um, yeah, and I also put the camera on the other side of this yard bag. Nice. Every additional row will be easier than the first. That's how I feel. <laughs> you basically just pop on top there. I was also doing a dry fit here. I came back later and glued everything together, but had to get some more materials first. Then here you go, back here, gluing everything together. That's the uh, Loctite landscape adhesive. It is very gummy and who knows how well it'll work over time, but it sticks rocks together. See, look at all those rocks stuck together. And only five stones left over. That was a homer. Felt good about that one. All right, now part, informal part two, the fence. All the rest of the parts kind of blend together because I had to do them all simultaneously, more or less. But this was my first time clearly ever using an auger. I was pretty excited, nervously excited. Also didn't know how to start it. That was cool. But I got it started, nice. Learned how to use it, good. This was honestly super fun, and if you have to dig holes, you should totally get an auger. It makes them a hundred times faster and is also just a total hoot to operate. It smells a lot like gasoline, but I mean, look at that. In and out, crushed it. <laughs> it's so fast. Oh my gosh, that's so fast. That is real-time excitement. I was properly excited about that whole thing. About every hole, honestly, it was <laughs> just like a total ripper just to go like bang, bang, bang and do them all, you know, highly recommend it. And then, of course, something had to go wrong. I got the auger stuck. Yeah, I, I took a photo of it, actually, is what I was checking there. I wasn't checking when it was due back. I knew when it was due back. It was due back very soon, but uh, I wanted to take a photo of it. So <laughs> I eventually got it out. That was huge. It took a lot longer in person. I wonder how much faster that clip is sped up. Let's check. That clip is sped up 6,000%, so it, it took a lot longer than <laughs> five or 10 seconds to get that undone. I think it was caught around a root or something. Okay, that's another here, note there. Cleaned up everything, put some posts in the ground, test fit here, there. And then once I returned the auger, set up some fence posts for concrete. That's what I did. You can also see the first glance here at the electric trench, right off to the right there, that's where the electrician's gonna wire the hot tub in. I do everything that you don't need a permit for, um, and the electrician does everything you do need a permit for, or a license, because I don't have either of those. All right, I'm not gonna give a whole lot of tips because I'm not qualified, licensed, or practiced enough to do that, but I do have one tip, and it's if you're dealing with dust like this, or really anything, cutting pressure-treated wood, that sawdust, those are all like, very strong chemicals that you just don't want to breathe in. So what I always said to myself was ABR, and that stands for always be respirating. Got to do it. Just always be respirating. It's easy. Throw on that 3M quick latch mask or even a smaller mask, anything. Just save your lungs. They'll thank you later. I also realized that this mask is technically a P100, so it's good for a lot of things, dust primarily. Um, not necessarily organic vapors, which potentially could be in that uh, concrete mix, but who knows? I'm not a scientist. Kind of, kind of a scientist. Not, not really, but kind of. Concrete though, concrete's fun. Chemical reactions and stuff. Ooh, wow. Yep, so another clip of me just cleaning up leaves. That's, <laughs> it, it took a lot of time to clean up all the leaves because this was like properly when fall started. So I was really dealing with it. You know, I'm not fully sure why I included this clip. I think I just like the morning sun. <laughs> All right. Make sure it's nice and centered in the hole. 
looks good. Looks square. We're doing three posts in the front here. Or sorry, four posts in the front, three in the back because of this condo. Four up front because of the gate. Let's put some concrete in. Okay, here I am cleaning up leaves yet again because you don't want leaves in your concrete and you don't want leaves underneath your paver sand or underneath your pavers or anywhere in your workspace, but that's what I had to deal with. Either way, cleaned it up, tamped it down, got it level, because I was about to put down some paver sand. Can't fake that. And by paver sand, I mean weed barrier, which was actually super fun. This was super thick, kind of canvassy weed barrier, 30 year protection, it said, I think. Um, and it was pretty easy to cut and scrap around the posts and then- Two rows. Oh, sorry, don't mean to interrupt myself here. Three rows. Four rows. <laughs> Since this was my first time filming a long form project, I would have to do that occasionally when my memory card was full or my batteries were dying and just take quick clips um, and turn off the camera in between. Sorry about that. Either way, here I am cleaning up more leaves. Cool, cool, cool. One more layer of weed barrier just to cover everything up. I didn't install those first posts because I wanted the hot tub to be able to get in still. I thought that was the most clever edit ever. <laughs> I did that while I was on a plane too. Oh man, I was proud of that. Okay, so here we go. Putting down the paper sand, it's gray. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's from Lowe's. The Home Depot sand was uh, orange? No, brown. It was sand colored. This sand was gray. It was a little bit more coarse, but yeah, it was fine otherwise. This did take quite some time, um, and I got quite a lot of time-lapse footage here. But it's really fun to get something super level and super flat based off of super flat and super level conduit. My dad was also helping me out here. Appreciated that. I feel like a general theme in this project is that basically everything took more time than I thought it was gonna take. And you know, that's probably just the thing with home improvement. Everything takes time and not rushing is a good idea. I decided to use these Brock paver panels instead of doing just a big gravel base underneath the sand. Um, they work a little bit differently and you kind of layer things differently, but overall they're pretty fun to cut and super fun to layer. You just do them like tiles, I think. This is what tiling was, is like. I, I don't know, I've never tiled before, but uh, it felt like tiling, <laughs> at least uh, what Watching YouTube videos of people tile feels like, I guess, you know? So overall, pretty straightforward. They overlap. These paper panels are pretty nice. You don't have to dig as deep to use them, and they supposedly work just as well. Finally back, finally with some brown sand, and now we're done. <laughs> Look at that. Then I wanted to lay down all the rest of the panels, just because once you lay down these panels, you can walk on the paver area, which is huge for laying the pavers. Um, instead of just putting them straight on the sand when you can't walk on the sand. Because it would be, you know, unlevel and that wouldn't be good. You don't want that. Cut these ones in the front a little bit too short, but uh, we'll talk about that later. First paper. Here I am putting the first paper down. This is huge. Let's hope it fits. Yeah? Does it fit? It fits. Nice. <laughs> So I was just measuring out how many pavers long and how many pavers wide we would fit in there. I knew with the fence posts we were cutting it a little bit close to the original number of pavers that we wanted to fit in there. But at this moment we had much more pressing issues. You can see the devastation. See that difference? Yeah. That's the devastation. <laughs> it was brutal. The second batch of pavers was basically a little bit smaller than the first batch of pavers, so I laid down about 15 or so pavers that are all 20, 30 pounds each, um, and then had to pick them all up and put new ones down. That was miserable. Luckily, everything ends. So <laughs> once I did that, I moved on and put more pavers down. In the end, it was, I think, nine, nine pavers by eight pavers, so 72 pavers total. And they were all picked up by yours truly, your boy. He picked them all up and moved them all around. 
Oh man, this took a very, very long time. And yeah, it's true. Just picking up and moving them to the general spot was the easy part. Then using these little tile spacers, which are, I think, the wrong spacers. I think you're supposed to get maybe like beefier spacers. But that's all I had. So I used those little ones and did it until dark, clearly. Yeah, this took a lot of work. Another day, some more micro adjustments. It was just like that game Rush Hour. If you ever played it as a kid, you had to move that little red car out of the way by moving the other cars. That is exactly what this was like, but with 23 pound stones. This is what it sounds and looks like in real time. Riveting. I did, however, get very, very good at deadlifting because that's basically what I was doing for the better part of two days with these pavers. So that was cool. Didn't have to pay for a gym membership those three months. <laughs> Shout out. Okay, so sped it up a little bit here because no one really wants to watch micro adjustments, do they? I don't think so. So this was my initial set of pavers. This was all I needed to get the hot tub delivered and placed down on, so that's where I started before doing the fence posts and doing anything else. To secure everything in place, got this paver edging. This was fun with these spikes straight through the styrofoam. Wow. That was fun, for sure. Looking nice, looking square, looking straight. Let's put down some polymeric sand, eh? Get this locked into place. Oh, but first, here's the view from the top. Okay, polymeric sand. I swear I did almost everything incorrectly. <laughs> Except this part. I did this part, I spread it really well. I got it in between all the joints, tamped it down. I was, I was rocking it, to say the least. But as you can see, when you brush the polymeric sand across very porous concrete pavers, they turn very, very gray. So I was super nervous about a grout haze, and that's, I think, where I went the most wrong. But again, still at this point, I <laughs> hadn't gotten wrong yet. I did outfit our tamper with that piece of paver panel. I thought that was pretty smart. Pretty clever. And it worked super well to tamp down the concrete. I didn't feel like I was smashing my hands or the stones. But it did take a while. <laughs> what I was trying to communicate here is that I did a very thorough job of leaf blowing all of the dust off of everything that was going to be visible, which I realized was way too much because it actually blew some of the polymeric sand out of the joints, which you definitely don't want. And I did not need to use this much water. You can tell because on the box it says, if you see any foaming, uh, stop. That's foaming. You don't want that, apparently. But I kept going. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, it's a little dark, but I'm done. The light's on. Plywood down, protecting the pavers. We are ready for hot tub delivery. I have a normal, regular job, so I was unfortunately not there for this hot tub delivery. So shout out to my mom for getting this sweet footage of these guys just moving this thing around like it was nothing. I don't remember exactly how much it weighs. I think it's like eight. 800 pounds with no water in it? Maybe 400 pounds? I don't know. That seems really heavy to say 800 pounds, but could have been. They just let it fall. It was crazy. And it fit perfectly. This was huge. Came back a couple days later and was stoked to see this. So now that the hot tub was in on the set pavers with the set polymeric sand, I could finish the front here, get it all nice and level, set the fence posts, and then put the pavers in. That was all that was left to do. And then of course build the entire fence. <laughs> but we'll get to that later. I thought this was super neat. I had honestly never seen the inside of a hot tub and it's all two by fours. And of course a bunch of plastic and pipes and stuff, but two by four, come on, that's crazy, right? Mm, here's me setting these posts. It was a super rainy day, so I didn't film a lot. The next day was not rainy, it was quite beautiful, a little chilly because, you know, fall in Boston, but otherwise went back through, was manually leveling all these with that little trowel. It took some time, but 
It was necessary because I couldn't really sneak the conduits in there to level it all. My primary focus was to just make sure that it dipped a little bit down, just ever so slightly to slope the water away from the hot tub. And that was kind of the prerogative throughout the hot tub project was slope everything down the hill um, because towards the front of the hot tub is where the house begins and then goes downhill from there. This I almost didn't include, but I figured I would include it just to be honest with everyone. I had to notch two of the posts because my math wasn't perfect and my handymanship was not perfect either. So here's me notching two of these posts, probably about an eighth of an inch here maybe, and a quarter of an inch, maybe less on the other post. And then we were back in business. Something I mentioned earlier is that I cut those front paper panels a little bit too short, so I had to backfill a little bit here with dirt and then drive that paper edging into the dirt, and hopefully that's okay. And you know what this means, I got another shot at the polymeric sand. I was pumped for this because I learned basically everything not to do on the last one, so I nailed this one. Yeah, <laughs> I used a Dixie cup to spread that polymeric sand. And honestly, it was huge. It was a very effective way to get it in those joints and not have to do a whole bunch of tamping of just like a bunch of sand spread everywhere. Sure, if you have a bigger space, probably not a realistic thing to do, but if you have a small space, try the Dixie cup. You know what I'm saying? So I spread it through here, did the same process, the tamper, the broom, all that good stuff. And the biggest thing was that I used a whole lot less water. And I also did this in the last one, but I used the blower afterward to blow off the excess water. And that got it in there. Unfortunately, there was still something that went wrong with this and that it was freezing temperatures the night following. So the last one, it ended up raining after I laid the polymeric sand, which was the final fail on top of a calamity of errors. This one, I think it was like 32 the night afterwards. So it was right on the border of the temperature they say to not have it at. Regardless, it all looks great today. So I think polymeric sand's a little bit more hardy than the box gives it credit. Hot tub, enclosure coming along. Pavers are done. Sand in. Electricity. Hot tub is on right now. It's at 104 degrees. And fence is going up. You know, there were some tough parts of this, and then there were some great parts. And this may have been the greatest part. Putting this gravel in here just made it look so much better, a lot more professional, and it just cleaned up the whole area, gave it some good drainage. I mean, everything about this was just the best. So, highly recommend using gravel in a landscaping project. Who would who would have thought? Just does such a great job. And it's like two or three bucks a bag. Maybe four bucks a bag, I don't know, it's like 50 bucks of gravel. Made a thousand dollar difference. That's, that's what I'm gonna tell myself. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the fence here. This was pretty fun. Never uh, done a fence before. This was literally my first time. But I think overall it went pretty, uh, pretty smoothly. There were some places where I didn't do my calculations fully right and we had to kind of fudge the boards, but since it's a shadow box fence, which is one on both sides, it ended up turning out pretty nice on the whole and you almost can't tell where those boards were fudged unless you're deliberately looking for it. So yeah, that's what fencing looked like at three times speed and this is it at 80 times speed. As you can tell, Fencing takes a lot of time. You can almost see the sun setting in the distance. I will say though, the final product of fencing is something that is probably the most noticeable because obviously it's huge and it gives this whole enclosure some real privacy. It's kind of the point, little paper patio, little wall, little fence, great times. This looks like a fence. Yeah, <laughs> I was pretty stoked about that, not gonna lie. Two panels of fencing done, and moving on to the rest of the panels. Hanging these rails up here was not the easiest job. I did pre-drill some kind of 45 degree pocket hole holes for these screws, because they were three and a half inch screws, um, and this helped a lot. But just trying to face nail or toenail these screws in was not really an option at least for me and my medium to entry level carpentry skills. Felt pretty good about this move here. Just took two screws out of the box and 
screwed them right into the post. It was pretty helpful, just being able to reach right over and grab what I needed. Each board was screwed in with six screws, two in the top, two in the bottom, two in the middle, and there was something like 200 boards we used, so, wow, 1,800 screws. And yeah, again, fencing took quite some time. We uh, worked in the dark. This was also after daylight savings time too, so that was kind of why. Last one. Needless to say, I was pumped. Back at it. Another day of fencing. Got my Dunkin' Donuts this time. <laughs> Upgrade from Starbucks, if you know what I'm saying. And some help from my fiance, who was a very helping hand on this last day of fencing. This really turned out to be a family project. I had help from my brother, my parents, my brother's girlfriend, my friends, my fiance, all these people, you know, just chipping in. It took a really long time and it was a lot of fun because of that. If you were paying attention earlier, you already know what I'm about to say here. Sanding pressure treated wood, always be respirating. This was our final fence stint. And I noticed that the boards were starting to get a little wonky in their quality as we got to the bottom of the stack, so that was good. Luckily, I did save some of the better boards for this gate, so I had some good stuff to work with here. In general, for this gate, pretty straightforward construction. I did totally mess it up the first time and have to completely redo it, but luckily I had over complicated it, so I had more that I could just cut off and then put it back together this way. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty sweet. Lots of screws, putting in some crossbars there to prevent some gate sag, and generally just making a big long rectangle that will serve to open and close the enclosure. <laughs> you know what I mean? cool yeah never made a gate before so just kind of going off of what i did this is my fiance's first time using an impact driver and she crushed it as i was building this thing i realized it was slowly becoming an absolute beast it probably weighs maybe a hundred pounds that's probably an over exaggeration but either way i put four hinges all rated for 50 pounds each to make sure that this thing stays in place i used two two by fours on their sides to space it out and then screw it in and look at this thing. Oh my gosh. Seriously, was so stoked. Never made a door before. Never really put anything on hinges successfully or really ever tried. So that was, that was pretty hype. Some of these finishing touches like putting the gate latch in and putting these coat racks up were all just fun. I had come to this part and taken so long that I was just happy to be here. This part, significantly less fun. I used a jigsaw to go ahead and cut all of the boards down to a little bit below those 4x4 fence posts. This took a very long time, and I also realized only at the very end that I should have just used a speed square and cut it with my jigsaw. It was going pretty straight, not deflecting much, so it gave a pretty clean cut. Um, but of course, it took me three and a half sides to figure out that I could do that. And in the meantime, I was clamping this long straight edge on there and it was sagging and it was just a nightmare so well at least i figured out for next time how to do it and then went back with a sander and cleaned everything up and this my friends is the final thing that i did well actually i put the lamps on top of the posts but other than that this was the final final touch before the big reveal You made it this far i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions feel free to throw them down in the comments and i'll try to answer everything i can otherwise 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.